Saturday night at Oswego Speedway marked the first ever Christmas in July celebration presented by Toys for Tots as well as Days In and Nights In of Oswego. And as a special treat, Santa Claus was brought to the Speedway as the Oswego City Fire Department brought him around the racetrack and then took him down to the Toy Hut for all the young kids to have a chance to meet Santa on Saturday. A very successful Toys for Tots toy drive also took place, all benefiting Toys for Tots of Oswego County as the entire Steel Palace took on a winter's touch thanks to a number of volunteers led by Christmas in July coordinator Lisa Sova as the Speedway looked very nice on Saturday. The pit area even took some on as well as the best appearing pit stall took place. Strong racing, double deuce racing and Tim Devendorf among the teams that took participation in the Christmas in July festivities. Some of the push trucks on Saturday even had a little bit on as well, including this truck here with a nice Toys for Tots flag and a Christmas tree in the back of the pickup. On the racing side of things, a number of Super Modifieds were back on hand Saturday night after accidents last week, including this driver, Brian Sweeney. In the Stilo car number three, Jerry Curran was also back in action with the Nuclear Banana number 24. Michael Muldoon back on hand Saturday, just one week after taking that wild ride into the front straightaway fence. And Michael Barnes was back as well, although they did have the backup engine from the number 98 machine in the 99 on Saturday after discovering a set of bent valves in that car earlier in the week. In heat racing action, Jeremy Pitcher and Dennis Rupert would lead SBS heat race number one to the green flag with Pitcher, who already has one heat race win so far this season, jumping out into the early race lead. Rupert in the 99 has been running much better here recently as we see Craig Harris and Cameron Rowe doing battle in the first heat. Rowe ends up in the outside wall in corner number four. A fire would break out at the front of that machine, forcing Cameron to make a quick exit out of the top of the roll cage of the number 77. Cameron was A-OK, -okay, but the same could not be said for his race car as we get another look at it here from a different angle in corner number three as the 04 and 77 touch and row very hard into the outside retaining wall. Cameron would actually hop into the Mark Castilla number 67, driven on Saturday by Tim Barbeau for the consolation event and the feature go. With racing continuing in the first heat race of the night, Jeremy Pitcher was well on his way to his second heat race win of the season as Russ Brown in the 13 manages to work his way into qualifying position number four to get his handicap spot for the big 35 lap feature coming up later on tonight. SBS heat race number two would see a pair of rookies on the front row, Scott Schaefer in the 76, Anthony Lacerdo in car number one, with two veterans in row number two and the three of Chris Proud and the 74 of Mike Bond. And Proud and Bond would waste little time in getting to the inside of the speedway, shuffling Lacerdo back to position number four. Next, chasing down race leader Schaefer as Proud looks to the inside, going into corner number three in that brand new machine built by his brother Mark, looking for its first qualifying heat race win of the season. Proud the leader. Bond would eventually work his way up and underneath into the runner-up spot as well as Tim Garou does battle with Lucerto further on back. White flag in the air last time around the speedway. Chris Proud would come across the start-finish line with his first qualifying heat race win of the season over Bond in the 74, Garou in the 17, J.J. Andrews in car number 93. Third and final SBS qualifying heat race sees Josh Kerr and A.J. Burnus up there on the front row with rookie Danny Apt in the 57 and the 98 of Jason Simmons on the outside with Burnus taking the early race lead in the 24. You recall Burnus has one feature event win this season, came back on opening day behind the wheel of the number 24. But the man on the move was Apt in the 57. The rookie pulls to the inside to take the race lead into corner number one. Apt had a podium finish in the feature event just one week ago, continuing that momentum here on Grand Prix night as he takes the race lead, pulling Simmons with him up into position number two. Burnus would fall back into third in the 24 machine as they come down here on the white flag lap just one more time around the speedway. Danny Apt would go on to victory lane, his first career qualifying heat race win at Oswego Speedway as he would visit Turning Stone Resort and Casino victory lane. Moving on next to Novella's super modified heat racing action, three heat races on the docket for the day. And he would see Brian Sweeney and Tim Devendorf in the first row. Sweeney having a bad start though in the three car allows 
three and four cars to go by him on the outside as he makes a little bit of contact there with the 21 of Cody Graham. Clayton Brewer able to pull his way to the inside as well. Brewer in the 23 battling Tony Steiner for Rookie of the Year honors this season in the super modified division as Cody Graham in the 21 makes his way to the low side of the zero of Timmy Snyder to move up into position number two with Otto Sitterly riding back there in the fourth spot in this qualifying heat as they all look for their handicap qualifying positions. Checkered flag would be in the air coming out of corner number four, Tim Dievendorf in the five machine. The Mance Brown L ride gets the heat race win just one week after a podium finish for the number five machine. Heat race number two, Jerry Kern and Danny Connors would bring them down to the green flag with Dave Danzer and Pat Lavery in row number two. Danzer ran into a bit of issue there. Coming out of corner number four, that allows Joe Gosick in the Berks Home Center's car number double zero to quickly shoot up into position number four. And this heat race would run pretty much single file through its 12 laps with the Paul's Big M machine, the 01 of Danny Connors Jr. Racing on to yet another heat race win this season with Kern in second, Lavery in third, Gosick in fourth, and Danzer would round out the top five in the 52 machine. Third and final qualifying heat race, the 02 of Brandon Bellinger and the 51 of Michael Muldoon would see the green flag going into corner number one with Dave Gruel and Michael Barnes riding third and fourth. Gruel would shoot to the inside early on to take the spot from Muldoon. But in this one, it was the 26 machine of Sean Goslin who continues to have a banner year. He started this heat race from the last position, quickly works his way up into the top four in the 26 machine, sliding on by the 99 of Barnes in the 06 of Dave Cliff. Next, he would slip underneath Muldoon coming out of corner number four and Goslin from the tail of the field all the way up to position number three in this one. Checkered flag would wave coming out of corner number four. Brandon Bellinger picks up his first heat race win of the season with Gruel in second, Goslin in third, and the battle at the line would be for fourth as qualifying heat racing is now in the books. Oswego Speedway Summer of Fun continues this weekend. Saturday, July 13th, it's the third round of the Shea Concrete Steel Palace Isla Super Series. Featuring Berks Home Center's Fleet Pride King of Wings 5, presented by Ponderosa Steakhouse. Don't miss the best in Wings Super Racing as they battle for the right to wear the crown. Plus, the road to the championship continues for the Pathfinder Bank SBS Series. It's King of Wings 5 at Oswego Speedway this Saturday, July 13th. Inside Oswego Speedway is brought to you by Novellus, not just aluminum, Novellus aluminum. Pathfinder Bank, local community trucks. Eagle Beverage, we bring the beer to you. Oswego Bike Fest, riding, rocking and racing Oswego Speedway. And by Best Western Plus, quality in and sweets, of Oswego. And the first main event on schedule for Toys for Tots Christmas in July would be the Pathfinder Bank SBS Series with their 35 lap main event. Presented by Days In and Nights In of Oswego with Jeremy Pitcher and AJ Burnus on row number one, John Tessorario and Chris Proud in there in row number two. But this one would find trouble early on as the 57 of Apt just tags the left rear of the three machine of Proud, sending the three car all the way around in corner number two. Everybody else doing a really good job, actually, of avoiding that race car as it would bring caution lights onto the speedway, and we would be forced to have a complete restart in this one. Putting Pitcher and Burnus back up there in the front row, it would move Mike Bond in the 74 car to the outside of row number two, right to the outside of his teammate, Tessorario, in the 47 machine. And Pitcher in the lighthouse lanes, car number 14 would dive into the race lead early on, Burnus gets washed a little bit high. That allows Tessorario in the 47 to work his way to the low side as Burnus tucks into the third spot with Jason Simmons, Craig Harris, and Mike Bond doing battle. Just a couple of cars further on back as Robbie Poland and Tim Garou run side by side. The one of Anthony Lacerdo would get sideways in corner number one. The 76 of Scott Schaefer would tag him trying to make his way by there. On the restart, Bond trying to find his way by the 24 of Burnus actually gets squeezed up into the outside wall. That would cause quite a bit of damage to the right front of the Bond number 74, but he was able to keep that car going. 
And at the same time, the 98 of Jason Simmons works his way to the low side of Burnus into corner number three. Simmons in the DNS landscaping, number 98 now rides in position number three. But hang on one second, Burnus in the 24 would dive back low going into corner number one. And at the same time, as you look further back, Bond is able to make his way by Simmons as well. So a good move by Mike Bond with damage to that right front wheel. He's still able to work to the inside of Simmons and next would try Burnus one more time on the outside out of corner number four and this time is able to easily make his way on by by the start finish line. Bond now up into the third spot as he tries to chase down pitcher and Tesserario up there at the front of the field as Craig Harris in the 04 and Russ Brown in the 13 do battle down the back straightaway. It wouldn't take long and Bond would be able to close in on the back bumper of his teammate Tesserario to make it a three car battle for the lead out in front. But another caution here in the third corner between Rob Pullen, Robbie Humphreys in the 07, a rookie in the SBS division, and the 79 of Mike Bruce, who would hop behind the wheel of that car after he had issues with the 22. They all came together down into corner number three as you get a look at the replay. Humphreys, you may recall, had a podium finish just one year ago in the Sportsman race here at the Speedway, getting some track time behind the wheel of the 07 of Justin Connell. Green lights back on. Pitcher continues to lead the way. Simmons back there trying to get underneath the 24 of Burnus. He would do so. Moving up into position number four, slotting the Burnus number 24 machine back into position number five. But the battle would still be at the front of the field with Pitcher, Tesserario, and Bond going at it down the front chute. It looked for a while as though Tesserario was going to be able to make a bid for the lead, especially right here as Pitcher gets a little high between one and two. Tesserario would actually tag the back bumper of the 14 machine, but Pitcher does a great job of hanging on to that ride to keep himself out in front. And actually, as the laps would wind down, Pitcher would be able to distance himself just a little bit from Tesserario in the 47, giving Bond in the 74 a clear look at the back bumper of the 47 machine as both of those cars get loose out of corner number two. Bond looking to try to work his way up into the runner-up position, but with the white flag in the air, it was gonna be Jeremy Pitcher pulling on to his first career Pathfinder Bank SPS Series win as a rookie in the division. It's actually his second career win at Oswego Speedway after winning the Sportsman event just one year ago. Tesserario came home in second, Bond in third, Jason Simmons in fourth, Russ Brown would come on for another top five finish ahead of Craig Harris and Dalton Doyle as Pitcher pulls the TNT Motorsports Lighthouse Lanes number 14 into Turning Stone Resort and Casino Victory Lane as he climbs out from the roll cage with his first career SBS win at Oswego Speedway. I don't know what to think right now. I'm, the way we've run this year, it's, it's just kind of like a blur. I mean, the car was really good and some tough racing. Johnny raced me hard and got a little loose a couple of times when we made contact, but it was fun. The car was really good tonight. I'm just grateful to run at such a great track. I mean, I came here when I was a kid and it just, it's just the best racetrack around. Uh, we're just going to play out the rest of the year and see what comes. I just want to thank Terry and Tracy Salazzo for giving me this opportunity, and I'll drive anything. I was pressuring Jeremy the best I could going in, into the corners. Uh, got together a little bit going into one. Um, we came together. I think it knocked my toe in a little bit, so the car started getting away from me. But I was right there, gave him everything I had. Just, you know, the kid had a hell of a run, and, uh, you know, good for them. Yeah, finally, you know, coming back together again. Had a couple bad breaks you know, in the last couple weeks, but, uh, you know, the car is getting there, and, uh, you know, so I'm really happy with the crew, the guys, Dan, Danny, all of them, for helping me get, the, you know, everything straightened back out. Yeah, bent the right front up a little bit. Seen the car a little bit, but, but, hey, Jeremy, congratulations to them. They're running good, and we'll come back next week and try again. Yeah, we finally almost got over there in that one over two. I just barely made it through that. I thought, oh, boy, here we go again. We made it through that, and then I got in the wall over here, but... We survived, we'll take third, come back next week. Taking a look at the SBS Contingency Awards from July 6th, the DNS Landscaping Hard Charger Award would go to the number nine of Jack Patrick. Jeremy Pitcher would take home both the Nice Price Auto Sales Up and Comer and the Sherwood Racing Wheels Lap Leader Award, while Jason Simmons was your White's Car Care fourth place finisher. Russ Brown now with only a 15 point lead on Mike Bond. Jason Simmons rides in third, Craig Harris is fourth, Dalton Doyle rounds out the top five ahead of John Tesserario and J.J. Andrews. Oswego 
Motor Speedway Summer of Fun continues this weekend. Saturday, July 13th, it's the 5th Annual Isma Super Modified King of Wings. Who will wear the cape and crown? Then, July 18th through the 20th, it's historic Sunoco Race of Champions Weekend. Featuring the ground-pounding ROC Modified. And on August 3rd, it's the $10,000 to win Mr. Super Modified. It's the Summer of Fun in Oswego Speedway. Continuing this Saturday with King of Wings Weekend. Inside Oswego Speedway is brought to you by Novellus, not just aluminum, Novellus aluminum. Pathfinder Bank, local community trust. Eagle Beverage, we bring the beer to you. Oswego Bike Fest, riding, rocking and racing Oswego Speedway. And by Best Western Plus Quality Inn and Suites, of Oswego. The final main event of the evening would be the 75 lap Grand Prix event for the Novella Super Modifieds presented by Days Inn and Nights Inn of Oswego with Jerry Kern and Brandon Bellinger out there in row number one, Tim Devendorf and Danny Connors in row number three, but keep your eye on the 50 of Dave Gruel as he would start back there in the third row, but quickly would try to position himself at the front of the field as he drives around the five of Devendorf. Next would cut down to the inside of Connors into corner number one. And just like that, in the first four laps of this race, Gruel goes from sixth to third in the lighthouse lanes. Car number 50 with Brandon Bellinger in the 02. Now in his sights down the main straightaway as the field file files through with Gosick in the double zero doing battle with Michael Muldoon. Muldoon gets a touch sideways. That leaves the inside lane open as Gosick, Goslin, and the 21 of Cody Graham would slide their way by as Otto Sitterly pulls up onto the back bumper of the five of Devendorf down the front stretch and into corner number one. The race's only caution would wave on lap number five for the 66 of Lou LeVay Sr. as he came to a stop on the back straightaway. The race would actually go 70 consecutive green flag laps from this point on in completing itself in only 35 minutes as Joe Gosick next looks to the inside of Devendorf into corner number three. The 99 of Michael Barnes at that point would actually pull out of the event. You remember he has the backup number 98 engine in the number 99 machine and unfortunately they would have issues with that power plant as well dropping Barnes out of this one as Dave Gruel moves up into the runner-up spot, working to the inside of Brandon Bellinger, and in just two laps, he closes ground on Jerry Curran, who had a huge lead in the 24 car, but Curran would get stuck in lap traffic just a touch. That left the inside lane open for Gruel to take the top spot in the 50, and in no time, the 50 car would check out and run away in this one, leaving Curran in second, Bellinger in third in the 02, with Connors, Pat Lavery, and Otto Sitterly doing battle further on back. Eventually, the 22 car of Lavery would work to the inside of Connors in the 01 going into that first corner with Sitterly looking for racing room as well. But keep your eyes on the double zero of Joe Gosick as he would quickly pull up to the back bumper of Sitterly as well. A great battle here for third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth on the speedway from Bellinger all the way back to Goslin in the number 26 machine. And Goslin, who started back in row number six, would move up another spot here going into corner number one as the 0-1 of Connors washes high, leaving that inside lane open for Goslin in the 26 to slip on by. He would next try to chase down the double zero of Gosick going into corner number three. And right here in traffic, Gosick slips just a little bit high, trying to look for the outside of the seven of Sitterly, and that allows Goslin to move up and by your point leader, Joe Gosick. Sean Goslin in the 26 now working another position further up on the speedway as they work on by the lap car, the 23 of Clayton Brewer the third. But just two laps later, Gosick would pull back to the inside of Goslin this time going into corner number three as those two cars would do battle throughout this one. Gozik would next try to make his move on the seven of Sitterly, and eventually he would be able to do so. On the outside of the speedway, out of corner number two, Gosik in the double zero. Now up into the top five positions, chasing down Lavery in the 22, and Bellinger in the 02. And Gosik once again would look to the high side on Lavery, going into corner number three. That kind of uh, put a light bulb on in the 24 machine as he pulled down to the inside of Bellinger, going into corner number one. So Lavery would move up one spot on Bellinger. Gosick in the double zero tried to do the same as well, but that door would shut 
in corner number two. He would have to re-rack and re-stack, try it again. This time pulls to the outside out of corner number four and Gosick again able to make a high side move on the speedway, passing Bellinger down into that first corner. Meanwhile, out in front, Dave Gruel had built nearly a half track advantage in the 50 machine as he works his way through intense lap traffic down the front straightaway, including Tim Devendorf, Cody Graham, Timmy Snyder, and Dave Danzer in the 52. And while Gruel was running away with this one, Gosick continued his march through the field as he works around the outside of the 22 of Lavery to move up into third. And in the next handful of laps, he was able to chase down your runner-up on the speedway, Jerry Kern in the 24. Gosick this time works his way to the inside in corner number three, and then pulls back to the top side of the speedway to work his way back through traffic. But as we said, this race would not have a caution flag from lap five on, and Gruel had built just a ridiculous lead out in front of the field. Nobody was going to be able to chase him down in this one with the checkered flag in the air. Dave Gruel would get his third career Novella Super Modified feature win on Saturday night over Gosick. Sitterly, Sean Goslin in fourth, Jerry Curran would come home with a great top five finish, his first finish of the season, period and a good one at that for the 24 machine. Pat Lavery would end the night in position number six. Dave Gruel with super modified main event wins in each of his first four seasons here at the Speedway. Remember, he got the win in the Steve Miller Sweet 16 just a year ago. Dave Gruel in Turning Stone Victory Lane. Uh, I think the car was taking me for a ride, so the car was just set up awesome. I was just doing everything I could. Once I knew I got out in the lead, I was kind of conserving a little bit. I'm really glad there's no caution because I didn't have much left, left the last couple laps. But uh, Billy Samuels gave me an awesome car. He's a setup guy. Got to thank Bob Hove, Billy, and Linda Samuels. Just uh, this awesome deal for uh, both sides of this team. Actually, I usually like to use that as an opportunity to try to get out of the guy I'm racing with. So uh, luckily it paid off this week. Last week it didn't work out so well. So uh, I don't know. It's pretty much the same. I think a lot of guys, you know, slow down a little bit. Uh, our car was pretty consistent throughout. Could have been a little bit better, but uh, we gained big from warm-ups to the heat to, heat to the feature, and that's a plus. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. I mean, you just keep picking them up and going as fast as you can, and hopefully a leader comes in sight. But I figured it was a 50. It was the only one I didn't pass, and uh, I didn't even look on the board. I saw a second, but I didn't even look at the first place one. But uh, I'd just like to thank all my sponsors and uh, great people behind me all the time. Um, I don't even want to think about reeling them all off, but... Uh, and the crew, uh, I get a little testy at times, but, uh, you know, uh, Pat Morrison did a heck of a job uh, with their motor and finally got a good solid power plant in it. So uh, look to next week. Uh, second, we only got one more to go, so we'll just keep it up. We wrestled the cars big time. Changed a lot during the feature. Um, car has been really tight. I'm talking to a couple of these guys and been tight for weeks. Talked to Joe Gozer earlier tonight and just been extremely tight. And um, I would imagine something to do with the heat, track change, whatever. But... Uh, you know, Joe was going awful good, and uh, Pat was good early. We just sort of stayed mediocre the whole race, but we'll take it. And the Novella Super Modified Series standing still show Joe Gosick on top by nine points over Otto Sitterly. Sean Goslin moves up into the third position with Dave Gruel in fourth. Michael Barnes drops back to position number five. Dave Danzer and Michael Muldoon sixth and seventh in the driver's standings. Central New York's fastest racing action continues through the month of July at Oswego Speedway. July 18th through the 20th, it's the historic 63rd Annual Sunoco Race of Champions Weekend with six divisions of racing featuring the Race of Champions Modified 200 on Saturday plus a 100 lap main event for the Novella Super Modified. Six divisions, two nights of racing, one weekend. It's Sunoco Race of Champions at Oswego Speedway.